Motorhead Garage, the program that each week introduces you to and shows you how to install the latest in exciting and innovative products for your vehicle. Motorhead Garage is presented by NHOU Protective Coatings. Now here's your host, Dave Dobson. Thanks for tuning in to Motorhead Garage presented by NHOU Protective Coatings. Now, here's a familiar face. Jan is with us once again from Innovation Performance Technologies. Last week on the show, we asked the question, can a recycled car compete with an electric car as far as being green and environmentally friendly? So what conclusion have you come to at Innovation Performance? There's places for the green car. There's places for this green car. There's places for the electric car, there's places for diesel, there's places for whatever other uh, fuel source we're going to use. I don't think any one fuel source is probably the answer, but I'm not an expert on that. All I wanted to do is look to see if we could actually go and build a car that would be at least comparable to those. And right now there are 275 million cars registered in America and probably another, who knows, 100 million cars sitting in our backyards and junkyards. That grandma's old 1970 Nova, you might want to pull it out of the back and go, hey, you know what? Could we take that car and make it as green as an electric car? And I think we found the answer to that, and that's why we call this car the Shocker. First of all, let's rewind here and talk about the electric vehicle. What would go into an electric vehicle to make 275 million cars become electric? So, I mean, I'm not an expert on this, but let's just do the math really quick. Even if we made a million electric cars a year, and right now in America, we make about 15 million cars a year. So if we got up to that speed, it would take still 30 years maybe to catch up to the gas gasoline cars that we already have. And right now, I mean, what does that look like mining for 15 million cars a year? I don't know, I'm not an environmental expert, but what we wanted to do is say, is the carbon footprint of this car low enough so that we, that guy in the backyard who's doing his own little thing, can he compare himself to an electric car? And what do the numbers bear out when you started to look at that between the two? It was pretty shocking, and that's why we call the shocker, but you're looking at about over a 20-year life cycle, about 3,400 tons of carbon more to run an electric car from its inception to a 20-year life cycle compared to this car, which kind of already exists, and so it's got really an unfair advantage because it's already out there. And so for those who didn't see the show last week, this is an 89 Mustang and you put a 2019 interior in it. You found a wrecked vehicle? <laughs> yeah, I've got some great guys working in the shop and they magic. They made all the stuff that you get in a modern car in this car, backup camera sensors, all the stuff that you want. And this is a four cylinder EcoBoost engine that makes a lot of horsepower. We could tune these cars to almost 500 horsepower. So you got 500 horsepower, you got 36 miles to the gallon and it's a zero carbon footprint to to get those parts and put them in this car. Now granted, we had to put wheels on it and we could talk about the car and what we had to do to build it that does create carbon. Now we know we've got a car that performs really well, but you guys wanted to see how it really performs <laughs> when put up against an electric vehicle. So you issued a challenge. What was the first part of that? Could we drive them from one location to the other? We picked Myrtle Beach to Daytona because it's cool. And then when we got to Daytona, we run around the racetrack and see who would do better. So in the first stage of that, getting from Myrtle Beach to Daytona, how'd that go? <laughs> uh, the electric car did not as good. As a matter of fact, their cars are pretty cool, by the way. Electric cars got a lot of gizmos in it. But the electric car, of course, had to stop. This car goes 1,000 miles on one tank of gas. You did that by putting an extra fuel tank it, in the back. We're cheating, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but still, 500 miles beats having to stop and recharge the battery. And You know, he got to read a couple of books while he was charging that thing up. Meanwhile, the other car already made it to Daytona, and I think the driver was quite pleased because he's probably sitting on the beach somewhere enjoying himself while the other guy's plugged into an electric charger. And now it's time for both cars to hit the racetrack. And it was kind of interesting because we found out Daytona was not letting electric cars there, so we couldn't get the electric car on the track. But you got this car on the track, and how did it perform? Well, it was kind of interesting because we took it out there with the race car too. So this car basically is the same thing as the race car, just without a roll cage and with a nicer interior and an automatic transmission. Uh, they both did exceptionally well. What was the impetus for you guys at Innovation Performance Technologies to design the Shocker and build this? We wanted to prove that the average person could build one of these in their backyard. That if you could harness what we already have out there, cars that are left in the backyard somewhere, parts that are in a junkyard, put a car together, it would be far less expensive than an electric car and 
probably way more efficient when it comes to carbon footprint. And now the government is coming after race cars. They want to make it illegal for folks to modify street cars to make them into race cars. How is that being challenged by folks like you? The whole make a car that's stock, not a race car, might offend some NASCAR people. And the reality is, it's not just going to be racing. It's going to be you in your backyard changing your tire. Is it going to eventually come to that? I don't know. But if we stop it here, we'll stop it here. We want to tell everybody in the world, listen, we're not the bad guys. We're not the person that you think is causing most of the carbon problem. We're actually the guys trying to solve the carbon problem. And we think that restoring a car and rejuvenating it is by far the pathway for our small group of hot rodders to fix this problem. I have to ask you, why'd you call the company Innovation Performance Technology? A lot of countries have taken our manufacturing and to take manufacturing, you have to take technology because technology is what drives manufacturing. But technology comes from basically invention and we are the country of invention. So I want it to be innovative and be on the cutting edge of what's coming next. And that's why we like to do these kind of projects. Right now, you got some amazing viewers out there. You do. I want them to put down the controller, grab a wrench, and grab the steering wheel of your dreams. Join the green revolution. You can build a car like this. You can also have one built if you don't want to go that route. Find them at innovationperformance.tech. And you can find more Motorhead Garage presented by NHOU Protective Coatings when we come back. See you in a minute.